Hi, family of God. This is Believers Global TV. But for the purpose of applicability, let's break it into nine. Because scriptures itemized it for us. You know, when you read the Bible and you study, you will discover that everything you need is there in a very simplified way. So that you can learn to order your steps. Hallelujah. So let's look at the nine dimensions of what I have shared. First dimension of the will of God. Matthew 6 verse 10. Thy kingdom come. That's the first dimension of the will of God. The sovereign reign of God. The authority of God. The government of God as it is in heaven should be reflected anywhere you are. That's the will of God. If we come to your family, if they pray in heaven, they should pray in your family. If we come to your family, if they worship God in heaven, they should worship God there. If we come to your family, if they live holy in heaven, they should live holy there. That's what the scripture is saying. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the first dimension of God's will is that his sovereign reign should become the reality anywhere you find yourself. And so a man is in God's will if his life is summarized in architecturing God's authority as it is in the spirit into his context. It may require you to talk. It may require you to pray. It may require you to fast. It may require you to spend your money. But by all means, anywhere you find yourself, if what is in heaven become what is obtainable there, know that you are in God's will. This is why the church is one of the reflections of the will of God. Because when you come to church, there are many things we love, but we don't do them here. Some of you want to watch movies now. Is it bad? No, but it's not the will of God. That's why we are not watching movies here. Some of you, as we are seated now, you want to watch the Premier League. You have waited for a whole month. Your bodies, each, every weekend, in the evening, you, are, you want to watch a match. It's not in God's will. That's why we are not watching it here. Now, this does not mean you can't do it. But this means your life should not be heavier in those areas. So everything you see happening here, carry it everywhere you go. You are in God's will. Worship happens here. Prayer happens here. God is praised here. Holiness is encouraged here. That is God's will. If you are able to bet this anywhere you are, you are in the center of God's will. This is what informs Jesus' motiv Jesus's motivation. That's why I said I came to this world to do God's will. I came to bring heaven to earth. That's what he came here for. And anybody who knows God's will, this is what he spends his energy trying to achieve. If he's in a place, his focus is not the position. His focus is how can we bring God's will here? How can we bring God's authority here? How can we bring God's government here? So anything they are doing that negates God's character, the person fights against it. You know, I was sharing recently and I said, people keep shouting and praying that Christians, we need Christians in government. We need Christians in media. We need Christians in school. I advocate for the same. But the question is, how about the Christian nations? There are nations today that are pure Christian nations. Yet there's corruption. That means what we need is not just Christian. It's kingdom people. Because we have had Christians as president. Nothing happened. We have Christians as senators. Nothing happened. They just bear the title of being Christians. They don't know anything about God's will. So a man becomes relevant. And his life becomes consequential. To the degree that they can bet God's authority in a context. That is the first revelation of the will of God. The second revelation of the will of God is salvation for all. The reason you bring God's government is so that the people are saved and transformed to live like citizens of heaven. And I'm sharing this with you because it's your responsibility. You are God's agent on earth. Angels at best will support you. The Holy Ghost at best 
will inspire you and empower you. But you are the one to make this happen. And if you are not making this happen, your life is inconsequential where it matters. It's when you transit from here, you will realize it. The second thing that informs God's will is salvation for all. Because there is a contention in the spirit. Satan wants men destroyed. So he leads them to death. And God wants men saved. So he brings them into life. Glory to God. John 6, 38 to 40. The scripture I attempted reading earlier. It said, for I am come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. Verse 39. It said, and this is the will of the father. This is the father's will, which has sent me, that if all which he had given me, that all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise them up again at the last day. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So when you are looking for the will of God, it's for you to have everlasting life, and for you to also help others to have everlasting life. So anything you are doing on earth that does not lead you to eternal life, or does not lead others to eternal life, that is your will. It's not the Father's will. If you are part of God's will, your engagement on earth will lead you and others to eternal life. Glory to God. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 10, write these scriptures down. These are sensitive subjects. That's why I take time to teach them like this. So that you can internalize them. There are times when we come to charge you up so that we can transfer something to your spirit. There are other times when we come to disciple you so that you know the things of the spirit. He said, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Next verse. He said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. So the will of God is for men not to perish, but for men to receive everlasting life. So any man who is in the will of God, his preoccupation should be to facilitate anything that procures everlasting life. Because this is the Father's will. John 3.16, he said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you want to find out if you are in God's will or not, find out your time, your energy, your resources, to what degree does it translate to soul winning? If your time, your energy, and your resources does not translate either directly or indirectly to soul winning, you are not a part of God's will. This is what the Bible is telling us. This is why even while Jesus was yet on the cross, God was already in the rush to raise people who will, raise, who will save people. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, he said, To wit God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, but he gave them the word of reconciliation. So he made every one of us who has received life to lead others to eternal life. Jesus speaking in John 20, 21. He said, as the Father have sent me. He says, so also send I you. And what was the errand? Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. He said, all power in heaven and on earth belongs to me. You go in that power. And do what? Disciple all nations. Disciple all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hear me brothers and sisters, if you have not made up your mind, then make it now. Make sure your time, your energy, and your resources, amongst other things, principally amongst other things, is channeled towards soul winning. Don't be found spending 168 hours in a week and having not imparted one soul. What did you use that time for? You wasted it. 
no matter the justification you want to give by all means make sure every 168 hours of every week either directly through your spending your time to go out to talk to somebody or indirectly giving towards soul winning make sure it is a part of your existence it is capital in God's will number three what is the will of the father morality and holy living because after you have received eternal life God expects you to live like him that's why when I summarize the will of God I said becoming like God to become like God number one you have his nature and number two you live in his likeness that's why I say let us make man in our own image after our likeness so when salvation has been procured then through the help of the Holy Ghost and the Word, we must live holy and we must help others live holy look at the way the Bible puts it very clear this is one of the clearest you will find in scriptures first Thessalonians 4 verse 3 it says for this is the will of God your sanctification it said that you abstain from sexual immorality this is the will of God even your sanctification that you abstain from sexual immorality Paul was talking about this in Romans 12 from verse 1 to 2 he said I beseech you therefore dearly beloved that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God he said for this is your reasonable service in verse 2 he said be not conformed to this world he said but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good you will prove it that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God so your sanctification and holy living is your progressive journey from acceptable to perfect will of God the more you journey in God, the more you will see that God has no tolerance for iniquity. The moment a man is able to live holy, he has found the will of God. You can't be holy and be outside the will of God. He said, be ye holy as your heavenly father also is holy. So the third expression of God's will is morality and holy living number four expression of the will of God intimacy with the father God wants to be part of your life you know the problem most of us have is every time we call upon the name of the Lord we need something and it shows that we are baby Christians because most of the things we are even praying to God for God told us not to pray to him for them. He told us to command them. All the times you come to God, you are reporting to him about the mountains of your life. Meanwhile, Jesus told us in Mark 11, 22 to 23, he said, have the God kind of faith. He said, when there is a mountain before you, don't talk to God about it. He said, command the mountain, be thou removed be thou cast away he said if you do not doubt in your heart you have whatsoever you say meanwhile 90 percent of our prayer is reporting to god about the mountains from house rent to sickness to all kinds of frustration this is why although we are praying we have no relationship with god but paul came to let us know that that is not god's body our prayer should be largely about fellowship our prayer should be largely about intimacy even those of us who are human here, humans here, imagine somebody, the moment he calls you, bro, I need something. From food to money to transport fare, the next time he calls, even that bro will irritate you. The bro will become like a plague. In fact, you will block him because you will consider him to be unreasonable. But unfortunately, many Christians are so unreasonable. Because every time we knock at the gate of heaven, we need something. That's not what God desires. God expects us to have a walk of fellowship. Listen, most, see, when you go to pray, tell God, reveal yourself to me. 
I want to know you more. When you go to pray, tell God, I love you. I want to experience deeper dimensions. When you go to pray, tell God, reveal to me the mysteries of your kingdom. Cause me to journey deeper in you so that you can entrust me with more assignment. Begin to pray like that. You'll be amazed. Most of the things you pray about on their own will vanish. Because the more deeper you get in God, the more empowered you become. And the more empowered you become, the more your challenges become insignificant. You know these things even in natural life. Most of, most of the people you know who are kings on earth, do they beg for food? Kingship already makes feeding an issue that is dealt with. How many rulers on earth do you see looking for car? Car is part of the requirement or the package of the office. The problem we have is that we don't want to go high in God. We stay on ground and we are begging for everything. No wonder I said I've seen an abomination on the face of the earth. He said princes are trekking. Why beggars are riding on horses? Because we are not growing. John 4, 23 and 24. Jesus told us the burden of the Father is intimacy. He said, but the hour cometh and now is when true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. He said, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. You will not know how important this scripture and how weighty this scripture is until you know who God is. The name God means self-sufficient, sovereign ruler. So that name already makes God a being that needs nobody or nothing to be what he is. If God decides that he's looking for people to have fellowship with him, you need to know that it is something that means so much to him that he had to condescend himself to have such desires. Because if God doesn't condescend himself, he wouldn't need you and I. So it is his love that compels him to want him to have fellowship with you. Hope you know that even before creation ever was, the love equation was satisfied in God. Because God is a community. God can love himself perfectly. He's a community. The Father, the Spirit, and the Son, they can live in that fellowship of everlasting love forever and ever. But God wants to have fellowship with beings outside of him. That's why he created you. This is why Deuteronomy 32 verse 9, I quoted already. He said the lost portion, the lost inheritance is his people. He said Jacob is his possession. Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power to save, the love of God and the communion of the spirit. The communion. There is a dimension of God that is separated for intimacy. A whole dimension of the Godhead. The communion of the Spirit. He said it should remain with you. Don't lose it. Don't lose, don't lose the communion of the Spirit. That's where the freshness of your life is, is tied. That's where the empowerment of your life is tied. If you lose the communion of the Spirit, you have lost everything. And a man cannot be in intimacy with God and not be in the will of God. Because every time you come into intimacy, God shows you what to do. The reason most of us are stranded is because we are visitors to that place. Those who live there, they know what to do. Because they say, ask of me, I will answer. But beyond answering, they say, I will show you, Jeremiah 33 verse 3, great and mighty things that you know not of. No man stays in God's presence and has a rich communion with God and is frustrated in life. It's not possible. Every time you become stranded, know that your intimacy has been affected. If your intimacy is kept intact, you can never...
Todes. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. But trust me, over and above that, nothing compares. Oh, you don't, the Bible says, blessed is the man that God causes to approach him. Ah, blessed is the man. You know why? When you come into God, you don't go out and leave God behind. God follows you out. The Bible said, Moses went to Sinai. 40 days he was there. When he descended, even Moses was not aware that his face was glowing. God had been deposited on him. Ah. He said as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. See, those of us who have intimacy, we know that beyond suit, beyond mascara, beyond powder, beyond lipstick, there's a glory that can cover you. That even when you are simple, people look at you as though you are of the order of the immortals. Because God will rub off on you. You think a, a man of intimacy prays for protection? No, he doesn't. He knows that he's covered. Look at Psalm 91. He said, blessed is the man. Open that scripture. Just read it. And uh, see the level of insurance that intimacy brings to a man. We are here praying, Lord, all my enemies fall and die. That's baby Christianity. Come up here. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, abided under the shadow of the Almighty. See his confession. It's not Lord, kill Satan. He doesn't have that time. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. Verse 3, he says, surely, my goodness, you know, you know, I'm not begging God to protect me. I know surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. From the noisome pestilence. Verse 4. He said he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. See protection. Just because you dwell under the shadow. He said thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrows that fly by day nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor the destruction that wasted in noonday a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right hand it shall not come near you with your eyes you shall see and behold the recompense my God arrows don't come near me pestilence don't come near me destruction don't come near me and it doesn't matter how many people are affected a thousand can fall ten thousand can fall not me the excellency of intimacy he said because thou has made the law which is my refuge even the most high your habitation shall no evil come nigh thy dwelling ah. court and you know the ones that are in the inner court and depending on the type you love it also shows whether you are in the outer court or in the inner court you are covered and that's not all look at Psalm 16 verse 11 he said that will lead me in the path of life there's a path of life where nothing dies where nothing fails where nothing is sick where nothing can be diseased there's a path of life where everything flourishes. He said in thy presence. It's not just life. 
is fullness of joy at thy right hand pleasures that's why you see some people even in the midst of crisis they laugh and their laughter becomes a weapon and you are wondering what's going on here they are men of the presence why do you think the devil is fighting your walk with God he knows that's where you become a God we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the Lord we are metamorphosed there's a realm of transformation there's a realm of transfiguration transformation is mental upgrade transfiguration does not just affect the mind even your molecular structure can be altered and we are not chained to better versions of ourselves we are chained to that very image so when you come out you and your God become one this is the will of God intimacy the psalmist said as the deer panted after the waters he said so my soul so my soul there are no superior things in the spirit so my soul longeth after thee the philosopher said kiss me with the kisses of thy mouth songs of solomon 1 verse 2 to 4 he said thy love is better than wine the thing that kings get intoxicated on he says nothing compared to your love he said because of the savour of thy precious ointment he said thy name is like the ointment poured forth he says so do the virgins love you he said draw us we will run after you we will not remember the tales of the wine we will run after you we will run a generation that seek him take me Lord to your secret place Hi. Baba hold me by your hand to your holy place I just want to see your face your glory, Lord. Please let me know you all. <laughs> then I have known you, Lord. Wow. There is a place my heart can stand alone. There is a place I am yet. When it comes to the deep, I am overwhelmed by this deep longing, Lord. Take me, Lord, to your secret place. You can take me by your hand. to be equated to the God dimensions it's not your doing he did it that way let us make man in our image after our likeness but that image can unlock in you until we all with open faces behold as in a glass that's when we are transfigured they say what manner of love has the father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God it does not yet appear what we shall be like. He said, but when we shall see him. First John 3 verse 1 to 2. 
we shall be like him. Do you know how many angels desire to be within proximity in the throne room? Only the 24 elders, the four beasts and archangels stand there. When Gabriel came to Zacharias, only one thing he enforced, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. That means standing in the presence of God is a higher rank than being an archangel. He didn't say, I am Gabriel. I'm an archangel. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence. And because of that, he passed judgment. Because he empowers you to bring government. And we, the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. Come boldly. The way has been made open by Christ. Come boldly. But our desires, our passions, will not let us. A generation robbed. Sit down for a moment. Learn it. See, learn it. There are realms beyond pray for me, pray for me. I'm telling you. There are realms where you function like deity. These are the blessings that we have in Christ. But all of them is roped into our experiential knowledge that is born in intimacy. You are supposed to be a wonder to your world. But there are versions of you that looks like God that is here to manifest. The will of God is intimacy. The Father seeketh such to worship Him. Number five is kingdom service. Because one of the things intimacy does is to empower you for service. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 1, Paul was talking about the will of God in the likeness of service. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God the Father and sustenance our brother. That means service in the kingdom is the will of God. So he's called to be a sent one according to the will of God. When a man does not serve, he cannot be in the will of God. You want to be in the will of God, serve. These are kingdom mysteries and people can't get it. Paul was talking about service and not just careless service, but service from the heart as the will of God. Ephesians 6 verse 6, it said not by way of eye service as people pleaser, but as servants of Christ. How are you a servant of Christ? Doing the will of God from the heart. So when a man is serving Christ, he is doing the will of God. If you have to be begged to serve, he means you, you don't know the will of God. Those who know the will of God, every opportunity to serve, they jump in. But you find baby Christians, they get offended in service and pull out. Ask our fathers who are here that have been Christians for 25 years, 30 years. Those days, if you err, they remove you from service. That's punishment. And people beg to serve. But our generation, tell somebody, pick this, this knot from the ground. It says 10,000. And even people who are called to serve on the altar, like preachers and music ministers, you invite them. We have a meeting. Please come and help us worship God. Uh, my B is 2 million. You are a thief. And we bring all kinds of crazy justification. Uh, I have backup people. I pay staff. If the honor God has given to you has not blessed you enough to pay staff, leave staff. That means you, <laughs> you don't have capacity for staff yet. When the ministry grows and is able to, from the place of dignity, cater for staff, it will show. 1 Corinthians 9.18, see the way Paul puts it. I'm talking Bible here. He said, what is my reward then? Verily, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not the power in the gospel. Every time you tie money to kingdom service, Paul said you have abused the power. No matter the flimsy excuse you give, that's not kingdom. This is what people endanger their lives for. We are asking for money to do it. 
In Acts of the Apostles 15, 25, 26, the Bible says, Paul and Barnabas, men that hazarded their lives for the gospel. I teach the gospel, you sing the gospel. All of us are ministers of the gospel. If you go and you are honored, thank God for it. If you are not honored, wait until God increase honor in your life. I know there are wolves in sheep clothing. I've been duped many times. I've been invited to preach, traveled for days. When you are done preaching, they say, man of God will get back to you. God bless you, I leave. After one month, they are still getting back to you. Do the next business and continue. Can they pay you for preaching? If they can pay you for singing, you are highly. And when you talk, a corrupt and evil generation, people try to bring justification. Which error? Go and read about those who sang the hymns that we are seeing. That's why our song can't last for 10 years. Because they are sponsored by money. The inspiration came from Mamo. Go and look. There are hymns we are singing today that were sung 50 years ago. They are still fresh. Fresh. They came from the oven of the spirit. Today it's all about money, money, money. Doing all kinds of packaging, building false momentum around ourselves so that people can give money. It's a shame. When you talk, they say you are collecting tithe and offering. Uh, you, you just know their minds are corrupt. Go and ask those who are pastors. You know, people think the administration of the offering is for the man of God. That's what they think. They think tithe is for man of God. Any man of God who touches offering or tithe is a thief. Because the Bible prescribed the administration of these things. It's for missions. It's for the care of the poor, the orphans, and the widows. It's not for the man of God. And then when there are Levites who don't have any work, it can be used for their welfare. I'm a traveling minister and I'm a, an apostle over this house. My traveling ministry is separate from what I do here. So the tithe and offering has nothing to do with my traveling ministry. I've been preaching from Sunday back to back till now. I preach on Sunday evening. Monday, Tuesday, I preach in Takoradi. On Wednesday, I came back to preach at the National Conference of Lawyers. On, on Thursday, Friday, I was in Jalingo preaching. I just came in from Lagos. I preached Saturday and Sunday morning. I'm preaching Sunday evening. Ask the person who traveled with me. Most of those meetings I rejected on Oridium. They gave me, I said, no. When I saw the situation around, I said, we are all in the same kingdom. I should sow into what you are doing here. And then you find people, no, 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 don't clap, don't clap. I'm not saying this to let you know as though I've perfected. I'm just telling you kingdom mindset. And then somebody comes, he thinks, why do you think we are not powerful in our generation? Influence is lacking. Go and check the days of our fathers. A man can talk and kings can change laws. Today, whole churches gather and do vigil. Nothing. Because God can entrust us with power. The fear of God is not there. We are not servants of God. We are servants of mammon. You want to do the will of God? You must become a servant of Christ. And when you are a servant of Christ, no man can pay you. Your focus is at the end of time. You want to hear one thing. Well done. Thou faithful servant. That's all you are looking for. That's your reward for serving. And you know most of these people are not trained. And that's why I told you about outer court ministers. All the people who do those things, go and check them out. It's jungle, jungle, jungle. They are singing everywhere for other Christians who don't know God. And God can keep them because, I mean... In every family, there are more children than adults. <laughs> it's a body, my brother. It's a body. But see, we have a war to take. So we need true servants of God to emerge. Our wars need to carry power again. The church of God is being attacked in different nations. And we don't have the authority to challenge darkness.
servants. Say Paul and Barnabas. Men that hazarded their lives for the kingdom. They hazarded their lives. You know, most of us, we, 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 we don't even do kingdom. There are nations I've traveled to. Nigeria with our, our poor currency. You will still convert your money to dollars to take there because they need help. When I was going to Pakistan, all our savings, we, turn, we changed it to dollars. And I went, I gave the man of God. This is the little we can bring. And they need help, you will see it. Is it somebody who is charging for money that God can send to such places? And when I came, I knew what I brought was not enough. I wish I had more. Because you will see the needs of the gospel. Servants of God. You want to do the will of God, you must become a servant of God. This generation that is after quick came, we don't know God's will. I'm telling you, we don't. And if you truly have a walk, an intimate walk with the Holy Ghost, these are some of the things we teach you. When he taught me, it was like sweating blood. I'm telling you, if I tell you some stories, you will laugh. It's like sweating. And he's still doing it, he did. Because God will be checking your heart. You can't serve two masters. You either serve God or mammo. So he will be checking. The moment your heart begins to tilt towards money, he will bring another law. I remembered when I traveled to, to, to Italy. I went to Lagos twice to do Schengen visa. I spent almost 600,000. I can't remember the exact figure now. For flight and visa and everything. After visa was done, I had to travel to Lagos, to travel to Amsterdam, to travel to Milan, to drive four hours to Torino. I preached there three days. Returned to Milan, preached, traveled overnight back to Nigeria. Routed Holland and from, from Milan to Holland to Lagos back to Abuja. The man brought euros for me. The moment I was waiting and he was coming from, from the, the, the lift, I was seeing my, my eyes were open, waiting for leaves to open, to collect, because they are needs. The Holy Ghost told me, don't touch that money. Don't touch that money. I said, from, 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 from Milan to Holland, two hours flight, it was like they shot something into my heart. I had to start praying, Lord, help me, help me. <laughs> my, I'm about to have heart failure here. But before you train me, hey, I beg, heal my heart, heal me first. Heal me. What is going on here? Help me cry. Hey, I was literally feeling heartache because my brain had converted euros to naira. And seen the size of the envelope. Oh, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, Father. Before I want, you don't know what we are talking about here. You don't have an eye. You know when you mature in this thing, it becomes harder. There was a time when I preached, they give me 5,000. When you are now preaching two nights and they give you $20,000. If God said don't touch, you will know what I'm saying. Jesus, have mercy, have mercy. You know what it means? It's the will of the Father. So that at the end of your work on earth, you won't say we cast out devils in your name. And you will say away from me workers of iniquity. We have servants of mammon. That's why you are listening to the message of people you are fornicating when you sleep. They are not kingdom agents. You are listening to somebody's music. You enter masturbation. How come? He's supposed to bring the government. But he's piping another frequency. Every day you keep hearing. I was listening to the message. I dozed off and I was, I, I was in, in, in immorality. Because that's the spirit powering that, that altar. You want the will of God, you must be a servant of God. Number five, the will of God is a blessed, empowered, and victorious existence. So listen, that God is saying, serve me and not pursue things, does not mean he's not out to bless you. He said, I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. 
What God has for you, no man can give you. Ask those who are accurate, they will tell you. It's not like those who pursue money end up becoming more blessed than those who are accurate. It's just corruption of the soul. I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. That means God has it in mind to bless you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. He has a plan for you. And that plan is superior to anything you can plan for yourself. God wants to bless you. He says the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow to it. So his plan is to see you live a prosperous life. Look at the first man God created. What was the first thing he did to him? Was to bless him. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. What else? Let them have dominion. How? And God blessed them. And said, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Have dominion. It is the will of God for you to be blessed. It is the will of God for you to be empowered. And it is the will of God for you to live a prosperous life. But God will not want you to compromise by being blessed. I told you, every greatness that suggests compromise is Babylon. I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. Psalm 68 verse 11. But you, the Lord gave his word rather. Great was the company of them that published him. But greatness with compromise is not God. So it's the will of God for you to be great. It's the will of God for you to be empowered. It's the will of God for you to be prosperous. But don't compromise becoming great. And also, don't allow anything suggest to you that godliness is mediocrity. We need great and powerful men for the kingdom to advance. I spoke to you about Joseph of Arimathea some weeks ago. After Jesus died, there was no tomb. And if Jesus was not buried that evening, it will scatter prophetic equation. Because the prophecy said he must be in the grave for three days and three nights. It was already night four. There was no tomb. Prayer and fasting couldn't do it. They needed one of the disciples that had connection, influence. And the guy went and made demand. And they gave a tomb that nobody had used. So God wants us to be great. But that greatness is for kingdom. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 8, 18. It is him that giveth the power to get wealth, to establish his kingdom. So any Christianity that tells you poverty is God, pain is God, it's not Christianity. God does not sponsor poverty and pain. In fact, in the Old Testament, poverty is one of the cause of the law. Notwithstanding, if we have to go through pain, if we have to be poor as a consecration to do God's work, it's correct. But that is a personal dealing between God and a man. Paul said, I have learned how to abound and to abase. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there are situations where you need to have certain levels of abnegation to be able to carry out God's kingdom. For a kingdom agent, you will do it wholeheartedly. But generally speaking, it's the will of God for you to prosper. This is why God gives you wisdom. This is why God gives you gifts. This is why God creates opportunities for you. If you don't learn how to take advantage of those opportunities, if you don't learn how to sharpen your gift, if you don't learn how to maximize the graces God has given to you, you are not in the will of God. So those of you that have voices that don't sing, those of you that have talents that don't use it, those of you that abuse opportunities, you are not in the will of God. Because every talent and gift sharpened, every opportunity taken advantage of is a potential door for kingdom advancement. God can't give you access to the presidency and you say, I'm a prayer man. The day the gospel needs a signature for the presidency, from the presidency for something to happen, if that signature is not penned down, you are at fault. Are you following this so the will of god is for you to take advantage of every opportunity he has given to you sharpen every gift he has given to you and by all means become relevant in your generation because your relevance is a door for kingdom advancement but while you are doing that 
never compromise. While you are doing that, never allow it to take the place of God. It's a tool for kingdom advancement. It's a means to an end. It's not the end. And this is why I am persuaded that most of you listening to me now, in the next two years, in the next four years, in the next five years, what God will make out of your life, even you will struggle to believe it. How do you think this message we are preaching can go around the world? He said, cry out, my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. So God is not here only to make you look like him. There are some of you listening to me here. God will give you wisdom for witty inventions. Because if those millions of dollars don't come, kingdom can't be sponsored. When was the last time you saw the billionaires of the world sponsor crusade? When was the last time? When was the last time you saw the billionaires of the world build churches? When was the last time you saw the billionaires of the world sponsor prayer rally? They don't care about God. That's why God needs to raise his own billionaires. Who can sponsor crusade? Who can sponsor prayer rallies? Who can sponsor church buildings? Who can sponsor Christian bills to be passed in nations? So greatness is not against God. It's actually part of God's agenda. There are many Christians that have been brainwashed to think mediocrity is holiness. That's wrong. I prophesy over someone. The grace for greatness. The grace for enlargement. The grace for influence. It rests upon you now. Sit down for a moment. See, hear me. Prepare your spirit. Hear this. Prepare your spirit for greatness. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Prepare your spirit for greatness. See, when God gives you a gift, as you are practicing, as you are praying, be telling yourself, this gift will open the door of nations. As you are sharpening that gift, tell yourself, because of this gift, there will be resources to sponsor kingdom. Tell yourself that. Prepare yourself. God gives you wisdom for investment. Tell yourself, this investment may start small. But it's turning out to become one of the biggest. Not just because I need money, but because kingdom must advance by resources. If you don't, see, transformation does not just happen. No. You prepare your heart for transformation. If you shut that possibility, 20 years will pass, you remain where you are. There are most of you hearing me now. Doors will just open. You will enter a place and connect and God will shoot you up because he has already prepared you. That by you, kingdom will advance. Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Thy will be done beginning be small he said thy latter end shall greatly increase in the name of Jesus I prophesy over someone the seed of greatness the mechanism for greatness by the power of the Holy Ghost let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now in the name of Jesus My God, see, we need mighty men. The Bible spoke of the mighty men of David. So that when the multitude run, three men can stand and say, come, let's hold hands. Oh my God, oh my God, 
if a David desired that he would drink water out of the wells that was in, in Rachel's by the garrison of the Philistine and he said three men three men held themselves and broke through the garrison they said the gospel will not enter Japan three men will hold hands and they will penetrate the parliament and open the door and churches will be approved they said the gospel will not enter China two men can hold hands my God we need mighty men mighty men don't you know don't you know I went into somebody's office recently and the first picture I saw the guy put hand on the president put the other hand on the vice president stood in the middle <laughs> as in six months after inauguration he was able to summon the president and the vice president put hands on their shoulder and stood there he is not a senator he's a mighty man imagine if that kind of man is president when people finish shouting everywhere he will call your excellency this is what we want you to do and that call can that call can be more powerful than a one million rally one million man rally one call so why we take advantage of quorum we also need men of stature we need ranking men and hear me except the word of the lord is not true i prophesy over you i prophesy over you even as it was with the dry bone rise up and become an exceeding great army rise up and become an exceeding great army in the name of jesus some of you hear this you will become mighty by reason of a gift i decree and declare from today the fortitude the intelligence to sharpen that gift receive it now some of you will become mighty by reason of favor favor that commands the allegiance of kings favor that occasions wealth transfer i decree and declare rise up to the functionality of that favor rise up to the functionality of that favor in the name of jesus some of you become mighty by wisdom you know what others don't know you do what others don't do by the power of the risen christ by the inspiration of the holy ghost i decree and declare the wisdom for witty invention let it rest upon you now I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of the nation. Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Yahweh is here. We cry, Holy, 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 unto Yeshua. Shekinah is here. We cry, Holy, Holy. the Lord gave his word. He said great was the company. That means God does not make one great. He makes companies. Companies. Collections of persons. I prophesy over you. Become part of the company of the mighty. Become part of the company of the great. In the name of Jesus. You know, some of you are ready. Can you hear me? Some of you are ready. God has used the last 15 years to process you. What is left now is for doors to open. It's for lines to fall in pleasant places. It's for recommendations, honorable partnership to happen. I stand here as a priest of God and I decree and declare.
the lines fall unto you in pleasant places. The doors of opportunity open to you. The favor is released unto you. In the name of Jesus. Gloria, He said, and the hand of God was upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab. There is a dimension that comes upon a man and he excels even the king. I prophesy over you. The hand of God comes upon you now. The hand of God comes upon you now. That place where you are being victimized, you become the possessor of that territory. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a shout! Listen, there are dimensions in God. Though. There are dimensions. If you need somebody to lay hands on you, God will raise one. But there are realms of victory that men rise up and they function in, making useless the presence of Satan. You will rise up to superior realms of existence. Sit down. Let me round up. My God. I'm out of time. I'll just list the remaining three. I've thought on it before. The third way to walk in the will of God is to walk by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For whoever cometh to him must believe that he is and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Romans 1 verse 16 and 17 I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. To the Jews first and to the Greek. Herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith for as it is written the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2, 4. Galatians 3, 11. Hebrews 10, 38. The just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sensory perception. You want to please God? You must live by faith. Number 8. How do you please God? Thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks. If things are not well, give thanks. That's the power that will change things. Acts 16.25 After flogging Paul and Silas, the Bible said at midnight, they prayed and sang praises. The prisoners heard them. Suddenly, an earthquake took place. The doors opened. If things are not well, give thanks. If things are well, give thanks. They say, let everything that has breath. Psalm 150 verse 6. Let them praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. For all things were created for thy pleasure. And how do you pleasure him? The father seeketh such to worship him. Revelations 4 11, John 4 23. That is how you do the will of God. Be thankful. All this carrying long face up and down will change nothing. He said, You can't even affect your height by one cubit by worry.
put worry aside. He said, be anxious for nothing. In all things, through prayer and thanksgiving, he said, let your requests be made known unto God. It's in thanksgiving that things change. I taught you here several times. Jesus came to Lazarus' tomb. Hopeless situation. John 11, 40 to 43. I thank you, O Father, that you hear me. Lazarus, come forth. He said, him that was dead came back to life. Preach to 5,000 men, not counting women and children. John chapter 6, from verse 1 to 11. Hopeless situation. What do you have? We have nothing. Save a little boy that has five loaves and two fish. Bring it. He collected it, gave thanks. Take, give them. Bread multiplied. Who told you your challenge is without hope? You don't know the will of God. That's why you have remained in that crisis. Begin to thank God and see the wonders that he will create for you. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20 to 22, three kingdoms ganged up against Jehoshaphat, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They prayed national fasting and prayer. The Spirit of God came and say, you don't need to fight in this battle. All you need to do is to gather singers to lead you into war. The Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. And the man stood up, believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye prosper. And they marched into battle. Before they came, the Bible said the Lord caused an ambushment in the camp of the enemy. They killed themselves. The last two standing, one killed the other one. Oh yeah, go home now. He killed himself. Your enemies can be confused. You thank God and leave the rest. It's the will of God. In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. It's a mystery. And finally, ardent soul winning. I separated this for emphasis sake. It said God was in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.19 Reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses against them. He gave them the word of reconciliation. You are given a responsibility to reconcile the world back to God. I don't have time to talk about the blessedness of walking in the will of God anymore. But when you, I list it for you. Write it down. Go and study. When you begin to do the will of God, there are many blessings. I give you six. Number one, it gives you a place in his kingdom. Matthew 7 verse 1. It gives you a place in his kingdom. Hmm. Is that Matthew 7 now? Help me. Or 11. He said, Not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. He said, But him that doeth the will of my Father. So if you do the will of God, you have a place in his kingdom. Number two, you have a place in God's family. Matthew 12, 50. It says, Whosoever doeth the will of my father, is my brother, is my sister, is my mother. So if you do the will of God, he gives you a place in his kingdom. He also gives you a place in his family. Are you seeing the blessings? And you know when you are God's family, it's God's obligation to take care of you. Number three, those who do the will of God and walk in his purpose, all things work together for their good. Romans 8, 28. It says, for all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that function or who are called according to his purpose. So when you are living according to the will of God, all things work together for your good. Even the battles the devil prepare to destroy you will result in your rising. That's what makes your life a mystery. This is why the will of God is a must. Number four, all the promises of God are actualized only within the context of his will. Hebrews 10 36, it says, For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you shall receive the promise. Most of you are wondering, God said this, God said that. Why is it not happening? You have not entered the will of God. When you enter the will of God, 
all the promises that are here and a man in Christ Jesus will be fulfilled in your life. Number five, benefit of the will of God. This is what makes your life please God. Hebrews 13, 20, 21. Now may the God of peace equip you with every good thing that you may do his will, walking in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Christ who is the glory forever and ever. So if you don't do the will of God, you can't please God. So when you want a life that pleases God, do his will. These are blessings of walking in the will of the Lord. And number six, eternal guarantee or eternal assurance. The Bible said in 1 John 2, 17, and the world shall pass away with the pleasures therein. He said, but he that doeth the will of the Father shall abide forever. Eternal guarantee is in the will of God. So God does not just bless you. He secures everything about you for all eternity. This is why the will of God is paramount. It's a realm of invincibility. Blessed are those who find the will of God and fulfill it. See, there is a realm of life where you don't have too much noise. If the devil is fighting, he's wasting his time. If people are fighting, they are wasting their time. You are just in a cruise mode, going from glory to glory. Because you have heard these words. From tonight, that is the realm of your existence. I said because you have heard these words. From tonight, that is the realm of your existence. From tonight, that is the realm of your existence. In the name of Jesus. My God, you live in an empowered realm of life. Sickness can bring you down. Satan can bring you down. Human wickedness can bring you down. What a life. I prophesy over you. From today, your life will become the envy of your generation. From today, your life will become a sign and a wonder to your generation. In the name of Jesus. Now hear this. If there is one cry you have in your heart, lift it up to the Lord now. Some of you are battling with sicknesses. Sickness is not within the context of God's will. Some of you are battling with sin. Some of you are battling with frustration. All of that is not in God's will. So make bold. Embrace that request now. God is about to change your life. I come in the volumes. message i know you have been blessed powerfully by this message i know you have been blessed and i also want you to bless others by sharing this message with others also in that way you are also doing the work of an evangelist